Welcome back to Intro Psychology. We're now into Unit 4, and this is Sensation and Perception. Oftentimes, we get the words sensation and perception mixed up, so we're going to start off this unit by launching right into the definitions and examples of what we mean by sensing and perceiving things. So sensation is really the obtainment of sensory information from outside the body. That is, uh, there's lots of things that go on and we have to take that information and transform it into neural impulses in our nervous system. And this is transduction. This is the idea that our sensory organs, such as our eyes, our ears, our taste buds, are taking this information and transforming it into neural impulses that our brain can interpret. That is, is the information, neurological information taken in through our sensory organs in our peripheral nervous system. And so contrary to popular belief, we have a lot more than five senses. Uh, you may be very familiar with the senses of vision or sense of light, that is, the sense of hearing or the sense of sound, our taste buds or our gustatory sense, the sense of smell, also known as our olfactory sense, and the fifth one you usually say is touch or a haptic sense. But our sense of touch can actually be broken down further into three discrete systems, a sense of touch, a sense of pain, and a sense of temperature. Also, we have some additional senses that are located uh, primarily in the spinal cord and the inner ear, and they help us with our sense of balance, our sense, a sense of position, and our sense of movement or gravity of the body. And so, as you can see, there's a lot more than just five senses, uh, and some of these things can be quite complex and, per and perhaps not happening in a conscious way, but happening in our autonomic nervous system. And so there's lots of different things we can sense in the world around us, but the way we perceive them is different than sensation. That is, perception doesn't happen in the sensory organs, but perception happens when we interpret these neurological impulses in the brain. So that is things that our eyes take in is sensation, but how we interpret that information, such as do we see faces, do we see lines or patterns, that happens in the occipital lobe, primary visual cortex of our brain, and that is perception. Also things like rhythm would happen in our brain in our temporal lobes, and so that's also perception. Now, oddly enough, we have lots of illusions in our sense of perception. So things we might see faces when things are not really faces, or we might hear things that are not real. And this can happen to lots of different types of our sensory information, including things like flavors. If you were to see an orange that is actually dark green when ripe, you may perceive the taste of that orange as not as uh, sweet or not as, as juicy. You may also perceive margarine or butter that is chalk white as tasting off when actually it tastes pretty normal. There's so many dyes and additives in our food that will change our perceptions of things like flavor. And so just by adding certain colors to, to certain foods, our taste and our smell of that food is going to be changed and altered. So there's lots of perceptual illusions we'll get into in this unit. In addition, we have some other types of perceptions that we may talk about less commonly. We have a perception of weight. That is, if you were to hold an object in your hand and you were to sort of gauge, you know, is it heavy, is it light? That, although at the sensory level, you're perceiving the pressure on your hand and the body movement, uh, but at the brain level, you are making calculated uh, interpretations of the weight of that object. So you are perceiving the weight of a box you're holding or an item in your hand. We also perceive time. This is the notion that you have a sense of whether five minutes or an hour have gone by, uh, though sometimes we're very off on our perceptions, but we can often perceive it seems like a short period of time or a long period of time. Especially when one's doing an errand, you may be really into the errand at first, then after so many minutes you may say, oh, I wonder how long I've been doing this. Uh, in traditional classroom settings, it's quite common for students not to check their watch in the first part of the lecture, but as the lecture goes on, they check their watches more frequently wondering when class will be over. We can also perceive lots of things about other humans, like perceiving emotions, perceiving intent. Uh, and of course, if one were to talk about things like extrasensory perception, ESP or psychic abilities, although the term ESP has both sensory and perception in there, it would really be an intuitive perception and interpretation coming from the brain. Now, sometimes we have uh, not just illusions with our perceptions, but we have this phenomenon known as synesthesia. 
So synesthesia is when our perceptual pathways actually mix in the brain and different regions of our perceptual pathways can communicate with one another in an atypical or somewhat typical way. This happens more often in infancy as there tends to be um, a wider scope of, of synaptic connections in early infancy. So it's quite common for young children to show some synesthesia, but as they become adults, it gets pruned away because it's not adaptive. But some individuals uh, retain bits of synesthesia throughout their whole lives. And so there's many different ways this can manifest and everyone who has synesthesia may experience this very differently. Uh, the most common type is the mixing of colors with what they call graphemes. So these are written uh, numbers, symbols, letters. And this is the idea that when you picture the letter A, you may have a preference to picture it as red, as you may have been used to associating A with apple when you were learning the alphabet. We also find that a lot of people, when they picture X, they'll picture it black versus an O, they'll picture it white. It has to do with the, the, the negative space around the shapes. But sometimes when one hears a musical note, they may get a taste or a sense of smell in their, in their nose. Uh, when they eat certain foods, they may hear musical notations. When they see a color, they may match that color to a mood. Uh, there could be a mixing of any combination of uh, shapes, music, colors, smells, tastes, and faces or voice tones. Uh, I had once had a student whose um, professor's voices, they matched onto certain colors. And if you had a voice that was olive green, they would have to skip your classes, for instance. Uh, so there's all kinds of different synesthesia uh, mappings. Now, sometimes synesthesia can be quite adaptive. And for myself, I am a synesthete. And what this means is my numbers and letters and some symbols, some Greek letters, like uh, sci and psychology, map onto colors. And it's not that I always assume that they're the colors. I, I understand that they're usually written in black font, for instance. Um, but my brain tends to associate them with it. So it, it makes a, a secondary network helping me to remember things. I don't just have to remember the content of a word. I can also remember the colors associated with it. And so, for instance, when I look at spreadsheets, I find that the number, the numerals 1 through 12 tend to be associated with certain colors. And if I'm looking at a black and white spreadsheet, I can find that all the threes tend to be mapped in my brain as green. It's easier to find typos uh, when using synesthesia. Uh, it's not always adaptive, though. Uh, I found myself once uh, in the city of Kingston, Ontario, and looking at bus routes either 1 or 7, and they were color-coded on the Kingston bus maps. Uh, I think they were orange, I think they were pink and green, and I said to my travel companion, we need to go catch the number yellow. And as you can see here, 1 and 7 are both coded in my brain as yellow. Uh, my travel companion had no idea what I was referring to because neither one of the bus routes were, were color-coded as yellow on the map. Uh, so so sometimes it can lead to uh, some major miscommunications and sometimes when I intend to say a, a number I will say the color in its place.